Located in the historic Armory Building in downtown Grand Haven, you'll find Grand Armory Brewing. The building is well over a century old and quite the step up from the garage where owners Ben and Ryan brewed their first beer. More on that in a moment. Today, we take a look at three brews unique to this tap room. Each of the three highlighted today tell their own story, contributing to the rich culture that is craft beer of West Michigan. The Crop Duster Citra IPA, Dewey Hill Amber Ale, and Goddess Blood IPA. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the inaugural episode of Hops. Up first, the Crop Duster IPA. The Crop Duster was actually invented in my garage. Um, Ryan and I were uh, aggressive home brewers, as we said at the time, brewing almost every weekend. And this was one of our first IPAs that we were able to uh, dust with a fresh set of hops. And the, the name was uh, kind of invented along, as, along with brewing the beer. Um, it's a 100% citra-based, malt-forward IPA. Comes in at 7.3% and uh, is still served in our tap room today and distributed all over the state. What's one thing that's unique that you guys picked up like in those early phases of creating this beer? I think the uniqueness is the ability to be home brewers and to test and to test and to play with different malts and different hops. Like what Ben alluded to, we were brewing once a month that turned into once every other week to that turned into once a week that turned it up, we should open up a business. Otherwise, you know, we're going to hit the legal limit in the state of Michigan. So it was that ability to just every week think about it. What do we want to do different? And I know our friends really appreciated because they got to taste all the uh, all, all the test batches. So that was fun as well. So when we were um, brewing crop duster, it was in Ben's garage. It was cold in the middle of winter. So I felt like we were just hovering around the boil kettle you know, trying to stay warm watching this thing boil. In the early days of brewing this and maybe some other early brews that you guys had, what was the point that was like, okay, we can sell this, we can drink this, we can sell this, you know, how many, I guess, go arounds did it take? I think a lot of that was our friends and family coming back and Definitely. saying, you know, you guys are, are on to something. And just the, the amount that we were brewing, it was just like, okay, we need to either do this or not. So, um, Ben had the idea of, of the armory building, you know, peeking our heads in and, and seeing what it's all about. Next thing you know, we have an official tour. So it was pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Second, the Dewey Hill Amber Ale. I mean, this is an iconic landmark. Um, for me growing up in the Tri-Cities, I always remember, you know, my parents bringing me to the musical fountains or to the 4th of July fireworks or Coast Guard. And, and that's where Dewey Hill is, you know. Um, then occasionally, if the, if the uh, fireworks got out of control, you'd see, you know, a fire or 10 break out. So we also have a Dewey Hill on fire that kind of, you know, represents that flavor. But obviously the fire department always did a really nice job of putting those out. But as kids, that was always, you know, a really fun experience and it's really entrenched in our community. You know when somebody is from the Tri-Cities, when they walk in, they see the Dewey Hill or Dewey Hill on fire, they don't ask about it, they want it. It's a staple here in town. And lastly, the Goddess Blood IPA. So Goddess Blood was brewed by the women of Grand Armory for International Women's Collaborative Brew Day. So once a year, um, the entire staff um, from the tap room comes in to brew an original beer. And this brew that was developed in 2016 has a, like I said, a healthy dose of blood orange in this citra-based IPA. It's absolutely tremendous to see um, the female staff and how involved, uh, like well-rounded they are throughout the business. It's, it's just awesome. And everywhere from direct feedback to the consumer to the intricate you know, production side of the equation, they know everything and uh, they are the livelihood of our business. What's something you guys are looking forward to? Live music. We have a lot of phenomenal local musicians that we cannot wait to bring back into the fold here um, and just all share a pint and enjoy, enjoy the music here. During the pandemic, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty and we were actually able to take some of our downtime to expand our entire operation. We doubled down on our production facility and literally bought a, a brew house twice the size yeah. that we had and to, to be able to keep up with the demand. We had the ability to be opportunistic um, during this time, which is not possible without our, our crap beer community and our, our patrons. So a huge thank you to them. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. Um, then even well wishes through email during all of this, just checking in to see how we're doing, you know, it's a two-way street and I think that's just so cool about, you know, the craft beer culture. For all things hops, head over to the watch tab on woodtv.com and stay tuned for next week's episode.